at notability and um, kind of how to organize it. So notability is basically a PDF annotation app and you can kind of do some multimedia notes. This app is provided to all of our secondary students, um, grades 6 through 12, and actually I think elementary uses it as well. So that's kind of framework for that. And the big thing about Notability is if you're not organizing your notes, yeah, you can do a search, but it just really helps. So I kind of wanted to walk everybody through that. On the left side here, you'll see all notes and unfiled notes, and that's, that's basically what your default kind of ends up being. And there's a plus sign in the upper left-hand corner, and you have subjects and dividers. And this is, their, their nomenclature isn't super intuitive, so I'll kind of show you both of them. So if you create a subject, um, maybe I'm going to call this subject math, okay? And I hit enter, and obviously there's no notes in there. It's just a subject. And then if I create a divider, let me call this, um, let's call this English, okay? And I'm going to hit enter. Now... Essentially, before I kind of explain the difference between subjects and dividers, consider this whole thing to be kind of a, a digital binder, if you will. So now the thing about math and the thing about English here is math, if you wanted all of your math notes in just you know one section and you didn't want subsections, then you would create a subject. But if you want subsections, and I'll show you how this works. So English, let's say within English, I'm going to create a subject. Again, the nomenclature doesn't make any sense. I realize that. Um, I'm going to have a subject for vocabulary, and I'm going to have a subject for um, Shakespeare, and I'm going to have a subject for, uh, let's call it, I don't know, essay revisions, okay? So now you'll see all of the notes for math can go in notes. I'm sorry, can go in math. But all of the notes for English can actually be placed in these subsections, and then I can tuck them under English. So I want you to kind of see that. Now, I cannot put anything right here in a divider. You'll see dividers group subjects, subjects hold notes. So I really talk to you know students and, and, and ask them, what makes the most sense for you? Does it make most sense, you know, you just want all of it in one content area or do you want subcategories? Because if you want subcategories, then you create a divider first and then you put the subjects under it. If you just want, you know, a subject, then leave it be. Now, something else that's not super intuitive, but I, I want to show you. Let's say I type science here, right? And I know it's underneath. So automatically it's tucked under English and I really don't want it to be. So if I tap on the edit, which is at the upper left, and there's like kind of like a little hamburger menu here. If I bring science up, you'll see that it kind of holds its own right there. Now, the other thing I can do is, you see here I've got unfiled notes. If I have unfiled notes, I can um, actually duplicate them, which is really nice, especially if it's like a template that I'm using. But I can also just drag them. So like, let's say that this is supposed to be in science. Now you'll see there's one note in science and none in unfiled notes. So that's an easy sort of thing to do. Something that we encourage students to do because we don't want them to, you know, get rid of everything is to create a, a subject called, you know, old notes. If they were freshmen, it might be, you know, eighth grade notes, whatever it is. And um, I'm going to move this up so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Old notes. And then anything that is old notes from the last, you know, that they want to keep. I mean, obviously they can go through and delete things, but if anything that they want to keep, they're probably going to want to put into the old notes section. That way it's there, you know, they haven't lost, it's not deleted, but it's not cluttering up, you know, the, the rest of their organizational you know, practice here. So that's that's kind of the, the long and short of the organizational piece of it. But there's a few other things that I wanted to point out. Uh, under trash, you can see how it's kind of a bulging trash can here. It will keep just like a photo library. It'll keep things um, for 30 days without, you know, without deleting them completely. And that's really important um, if you accidentally delete something. So that's something I wanted to point out. And then in the bottom left-hand corner, there's a settings. Just wanted to walk through a few of these. So there's a colorful subjects. Some people really like that. It just makes it easier to see things. There's also... Um, you know, some document sort of thing, so you can change, you know, the paper and date and time. Um, typing, same thing. You can set, uh, when you're working on these, you can set kind of a, an automatic uh, default text and font. 
But the handwriting thing is really important, you know, especially if you have students who are left-handed, you know, so you'll want to turn that on. And the big, big thing I have to show everybody, well, first of all, you have a managed account, so you should be able to log into Google Drive right here. But the auto backup is tremendously important. So Notability doesn't automatically back up, and it's not really a cloud-based app. So what happens is if students, you know, something happens to their iPad, um, you know, stolen or, or lost or whatever, then, you know, there's not a really easy way to recover the notes. Uh, especially if, you know, let's say that something happened to their iPad and it was broken and they had to swap it out for a new iPad, then their notes would be gone unless they do an auto backup to Google Drive. And you can see with that settings, that means that it's auto backed up and it, it, it is backing up. And if they go into Google Drive, there's automatically a folder called Notability and it has all of their notes in it, which is tremendously awesome. Now, they just have to have this turned on, which is the biggie. So keep that part in mind. Um, the other thing I just wanted to show you here is under you know math or any of these, they can um, change the color of these, which is nice. So if they wanted to color code certain things, each one of our content areas has a different color uh, in Google Classroom and in Google Calendar just to make it a little bit easier for students. They always know math is, you know, this color um, and so on and so forth. So that's an easy thing for them to do. And, and really, there's a lot of other things that you can do with Notability, but I, I really wanted to focus on kind of the organizational structure since we're talking about uh, note-taking and things like that. So I hope that this was helpful, and um, if you have any questions, you can email whsedtech at eansisd.net.